Now what is up my fellow prod coders and welcome to this video and today we will finish off our sub navigation. So we already did these uh, drop downs. So that works nice. We have the borders, everything as it is supposed to be. Uh, the only thing we still need is we still need these buttons here on the right and that shouldn't be too hard. So let's go to Bowman. And by the way, we need, a, we need icons in these uh, buttons. So you just saw it. Let's go to button and let's scroll down and somewhere here. Yes, here. So we have a button with some text and with an icon. And if we go back, this is exactly what we need. So here we have this pen and here this building and then we have some text. So let's uh, go in here and let's just see, okay, this is the code for this, the markup for this um, GitHub button. Uh, so let's go back and to our sub nav element and let's just paste this. And just to recall, okay, we have a button and inside that we have a span with an icon. Okay, that's okay. And then we have another span with the actual text. So this is this text over here. And we actually need it twice. So let's make a copy of that. And that should be it. Now, what we still need though, is it's write a review and for businesses. Okay, so we need to change the text, write a review, review, and then for uh, businesses. Mm -hmm. That looks like quite reasonable. And apart from that, we need to change the icons. But let's ch first check how it looks. Okay, so we now have these two buttons, but we still have the GitHub icon. So um, the first icon was some sort of uh, pen or something. Yeah, this one. So we can just say fa-pen and instead of fa-github, we just we will just say fa-pen. And the other one was some sort of um, building, maybe. Yeah, so either this one. Uh, ah, I think it could be this one, right? Hotel, or we pick building. Let's pick hotel. So it is fa-hotel. Okay, fair enough. Let's go here and let's say FA-Hotel. Okay, so we have the proper, we should have the proper icon, icons. Um, wait, it was fa fast, I think. Yes. So we accidentally copied this fab here, but it should be fast. Um, nice, so we have these buttons. That's kind of cool. Uh, what could we do next? Well, if we go in here, now this closing element is a little bit useless, so maybe we can do this. And maybe we can do this, this as well. So I have a self-closing element. Uh, shouldn't do anything. Now, the next thing we can do here is these buttons should actually be floated to the right. And remember, if you want to float something to the left and to the right, then the easiest way to do this is by using Flexbox. So if you go to the Flexbox uh, documentation at CSS Tricks, uh, you can have a look at this justify content uh, property. And especially at this space between uh, value. And space between, what it does is, it maximizes the space between all items in the flex container. And if you only have two items, well, then one item is floated to the left and the other one is floated to the right. And this is exactly what we're going to do. So let's go to our code editor and let's put all the stuff that is supposed to be on the left inside of this div. So we're just going to cut it and paste it right here. Uh, maybe we should like uh, indent it properly. And then in here, we will add another div and put the rest of that in here. 
Oh, and I just noticed because we copied from this uh, Bulma documentation, we have this um, class here and we don't want that. So we can go, what do I have to click here? Always try to click so that you guys see what I'm doing. So we can say class and we replace it with class name. And I think we need to click here and then everything is replaced. Nice. Okay, so these two are now wrapped in, into inside uh, different divs. And the next thing we need to do, we need to wrap these two divs inside a flex container. So let's say a sub nav and then display flex and then justify content space between. Okay, and then we go back and import our styles. And since we're using CSS modules, we need to import it like I do it right now. And then we can just say class name equals and then styles and then add the class that we uh, used before. Oh, and it's not sub nav item, of course, it's sub nav. Okay, so let's go back. Yes, and we see everything is properly floated to the right. So that's kind of cool. Um, let's take care of these uh, borders here. So what I don't like right now is here we don't have round borders, um, but uh, in here we have these round borders and we don't want that because it should look consistent. And one way to do this is we are just going to add a new uh, class and we are just going to call this mm, maybe subnav button. And one important thing, uh, we will add this class in here. Maybe let's do that first so that you know what we're doing. And add it here. And then we we'll say styles and then subnav button. Okay. And we should copy this and then do the exact same here. Uh, actually, we could have copied everything, uh, but yes. So this is subnav button and this subnav button um, in here, we're going to say border radius zero. And now it's going to get interesting. So we will go back and we see nothing happens <laughs> and the reason is that our rule is not specific enough so bulma like basically our rules don't kick in uh, because our selector is not very specific but if we do something like global uh, button uh, dot button then we say okay everything that has the class uh, button so this is the bulma class that's why we use this colon global to not have CSS modules add any prefix or suffix to this class. Um, then we want a border radius of zero. Okay, so that's pretty good. And now the last thing we should do here, uh, we should remove these bottom borders. So let's say border uh, bottom is zero. Just to stay consistent because on the left side, we also don't have these bottom borders. And there's just one more thing here. So we have like these. So this appears to be a little bit thicker because we have two borders close by. Uh, so it's not that cool. So let's just say we had another class and um, global uh, dot button. And we say omit right uh, border. And then we say border right none. So this says if you have this omit right border class in here, uh, then please don't add any right border because otherwise it just looks weird. Omit right border. Okay, so let's go back. And yes, that looks pretty nice. But what happened with our, okay. I'm zoomed in. 
Uh, now one more thing. So now everything is floated to the left and to the right, but actually it should align with our uh, top navigation. So in our screenshot, our sub navigation is directly underneath um, our main navigation here. And well, it's kind of like there's multiple ways of doing this. So the way Yelp does it in their website, and which is basically the easiest approach, uh, is to just give this thing like a maximum width and then to center all elements in here. That should work, but it's not really responsive. But right now we don't care about responsiveness. We don't do premature optimization. We just want to get something up and running and then later on we can improve it. So let's go back to our code editor and let's go back to our uh, CSS class and let's just say, um, yeah, how, how big should it actually be? Let's inspect it. Um, this, okay. Yeah, so basically if we add all these uh, values like 75 uh, pixels and then we have a little bit of a margin or padding. Um, if we add all this up, then we end up roughly at 1100 pixels. So I already did it before, but I'm not going to show you how to add numbers. <laughs> So let's just say max with uh, 1,100 pixel. Okay. And bam, this is how it looks. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but now we have to center all that stuff um, horizontally. And then it will be positioned directly underneath this. And the easiest way to center it is by using uh, flexbox. So we can say dot container. And then we say uh, display uh, flex and then justify content center and then we go to our sub nav and uh, maybe uh, class name equals styles dot container and then we're going to put all of that stuff in here oops what is this uh, Okay, I think I accidentally deleted this one. So that should work. What is it? What, what does this belong to? Oh yeah, this belongs to this. So actually this should be like indented like so. Like this, yes. Okay, cool. So now it's centered, but we still have the problem that um, it's not taking all the width it has available because we just set the maximum width. And in order to work around this issue, we can go to our um, CSS file and we can just say with 100%. And this tells our uh, sub nav, okay, take everything that you, you can possibly get. And here we go. So that's pretty much it. Nice, our thing looks exactly like the one in the screenshot. So that's pretty cool. Now just one more thing I just noticed is that here, this button here, it has a top uh, border that doesn't look nice. So let's go back to our uh, button and let's just say uh, border top zero. Yes, now it's gone. So that's pretty good. Uh, I think we're done over here. Um, nice. So in the next uh, video, we can continue with uh, the next component like this search results. And let's just quickly commit our stuff and finish off this video because it's already quite long. So we can say git status and then git add dash a. And then we can say uh, git commit dash m add subnav. And then we can say git push. Cool. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And also please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.